So I was thinking that, hey, maybe I should actually make a game, but it's not going to be any kind of a game. I thought it would be a good idea to use some of the stuff from my previous videos. Like for example, well, this. And what this exactly is, it's let's just say some kind of a filter. And I wanted to use that with a combination of another thing from my post-processing effect video, since I don't think this has ever been done on Roblox before. But well, anyways, as usual, if I like to support the support channel, and let's get into the video. So here I'm just going to make everything from well scratch and I thought that maybe I should actually use something like this because it gives kind of a very eerie effect and if this were a filter well yeah you can kind of see that we're going to have a horror game already going and also really quickly I just wanted to say that I don't really have an idea for this yet I just wanted this video to be kind of like a devlog where you guys can suggest what can be added to the game down in the comments because I know that there are really creative people in my community that are probably also way smarter than me. But let's just go back to well this. So what this model is, this is basically just a sphere mesh and its material is set to glass with a transparency value above 1. And it also has a highlight instance, where normally if I just move it out, you're not really going to be able to see this effect unless I hover over the sphere. But if I add a highlight instance to this sphere, well, oh well, that's a hinge constraint. If I add a highlight and basically just disable it, it, it just always going to render. So I'm just going to put the filter highlight into the sphere so it's going to look like this. And the settings on this highlight are basically the filter transparency set to a really high number with basically this color. Now if I also were to move them you can see that this is going to change but I'm just going to leave it at this value. And now following one of my previous videos I was thinking what would be the best way to actually apply this effect, this filter, to the environment. And well I thought that maybe putting the highlight instance into the space is going to work but although this effect looks cool there is kind of few flaws one of them is that you can really see the skybox change and another thing is going to be with the terrain where if i choose let's say fill this it's not really going to render this effect properly it's only going to work if the depth mode of the highlight is set to be always on top and it being always on top doesn't necessarily guarantee that this is going to be rendered properly. So I just needed to figure out a way of applying this filter to everything. And there was a section in the filters video about, well, applying this to a camera. But basically, this being a sphere is not all it's going to have the best effect because the distance from the center of the sphere to the edge of the sphere basically meaning from the where camera is going to be is going to have this kind of a distortion but if an item is let's say in front or in the middle right there it's not really going to be distorted because of that if i were to just scale it down you can see that the edges are a little bit weird but if this was a bit closer it's going to have normal edges so well i just had an idea and this idea involves well blender because what's going to be better to put in front of a camera where the viewport is basically just a flat plane than another plane which is going to actually be a 3d object and also i would prefer to make a plane where one of these sides is invisible because if i were to use a part sometimes the light from the sky is going to basically just reflect from the part but anyway let's just actually export this and here it is in studio so if i were to place this in front of the camera it would basically be like this and now if i were to make it transparent with the glass material again i'm still kind of going to keep the effect so if i were to add this highlight into the plane now everything that's going to be rendered through the glass material is basically going to look like this but now there is a question on how to actually apply this and if i just insert this model and just go into the script you can see that this script creates a part and basically gets the viewport size height and width and sets the part size accordingly and then positions the c-frame of the part to be right in front of the camera with this offset distance so i'm just going to copy everything go to the starter player then the starter player scripts and just add a local script and just name this one add filter then i'm going to move this plane with the highlight into the replicated storage and just also move it right here then i basically just want to get the run service replicated storage and a reference to the plane and here i'm just going to paste this script basically just comment it and that's because i need to get the distance and then just make a local function which is going to be called update then i'm just going to do run service then bind to render step and then it can be something like filter the priority can be like enum render priority that camera and lastly the function is going to be the update oh and this was supposed to be that camera that value plus one and here i'm just going to copy all of this paste it into this function also this one gets the delta time and there also needs to be a camera so i can just do workspace.current camera and just name 
name this variable to camera. And what I like to do is have a variable for these math functions like so. And then after getting all of this, we basically just need to get the or set the part size and C frame. So I can just do this. And then I also need to fix the vector size because this is set to an offset distance to be the same as the size of the plane like this because again it's a flat plane and I also realized that I should probably change the parent of the plane to be workspace so now if I do a playtest it actually added the filter and I don't know why but my character is very wide but anyways if I go into the workspace I'm going to have the plane right here and its size and c-frame is going to be relevant to the size of this screen and let me just see something about the transparency yeah that's the thing that's changing the width of the screen for some reason so I can even have something like well this and this is really weird and the transparency set to 4 is having a really funny effect but I think now with this we have a base for a game ready and you can see that it's probably going to be really interesting but I'm probably going to leave the transparency on like 1.2 so I'm just going to go to the plane and then change this one to 1.2 like this and I can just remove all of this unnecessary code and once again for a quick showcase if I just reset my character it's basically going to be fine and another thing if I go to the player scripts and just disable the add filter for some reason the plane is just going to be down in the void so let me just well anchor it so now if I disable the add filter and move my camera away it should be basically right here and this is what the filter is in well reality we basically just have this well a really small plane in front of our camera just so it's a little bit easier to see i'm going to make it a bit bigger but you probably get the idea at this point okay but let's actually start adding different stuff into the game and i thought that making it a little bit atmospheric would probably go well with this filter and what's a better atmosphere than well nature so i'm just going to make basically just a really flat grass terrain where i'm just going to fill this and just close the terrain editor and just move this right here and now this is going to be pink so i might have to change the filter later or maybe the color of the glass but basically if i do a play as now this is going to be the game and i just noticed that some parts of this plane is kind of sticking out a little bit so i probably have to fix that right now and it's going to be as simple as just making the size of the plane a little bit wider okay but let me basically just see what i can do with the grass by going to the terrain instance then the material color and the grass and i should be able to just well probably find something that's going to go well with a horror atmosphere like maybe for example this so now it's going to look like this and I also thought about maybe making it nighttime, since this is supposed to be a horror game after all, but for some reason it was making everything really white. So I might actually have to change the color of the highlight to be maybe something like this. And I'm not sure how this is going to work because now we're not going to have the skybox. And this could actually work, but it's not really going to go too well with the type of a game that I actually want to make. Or maybe it is, but we'll basically just see. But I'm just going to cut this part and well, experiment with something. And I basically just came up with this. Where this is not really perfect, but for some reason it's making the stars flicker, which is pretty funny. And I'm just going to show the settings now. So here I just added the color correction into the lighting service, changed the brightness, also I changed the clock time, the exposure composition, and the star count. So I can, for example, leave the clock time to be basically day now, but the client is going to see it really dark. But now I also thought about maybe adding a tool for the player, which can be something like a light. And I do have a lamp model somewhere, so let me just look for that. And I do in fact have one right here, so I'm just going to make it into a tool. By adding a tool instance, moving the model into the tool, and then just adding a part. And now this part is roughly going to be around the center, or like the top center, since this is going to be the handle, where I actually need to name this part handle then disable the collision as well as make it transparent and not cast the shadow and now i can add the weld constraint select the part zero to be the handle not the wire the handle and part one to be something like the for example base and if i move this into the starter pack and just do a play test my character should have a lamp and it actually does and now it's starting to look pretty interesting also let me guys know if this should be third person or maybe in first person since it's going to be kind of important for the game but i said that this was supposed to have nature so i'm actually just going to add something now one of the things is going to be a bush from my other dynamic foley tutorial where it basically just has the script and the only thing i changed from that video is that it's going to play a random sound i'm also going to change that later to only change the playback speed 
and only one sound instant because it's going to be a bit less memory consuming. But basically, if I just walk into this bush, it should just give me an error, and that's because I didn't put the zone module into the replicated storage. So I'm just going to put it right here. And I also made a tutorial on the script too. But I also realized that I should get the windshake initialized. That's put into the starter player scripts. So now if I do a playtest, the bush is going to be moving and if I walk into it, it's going to actually react. And wow, it looks really nice in the dark. But that's basically one of the things and I also had another dynamic thing which was this tree. And this tree on the other hand is going to flicker a lot. So I think that something might be actually broken with rendering. Yeah, I don't really know what's up with this one and now it's fixed. Never mind. Yeah, I'm just going to leave this one. And then this is a horror game already. But how this tree is supposed to work is that if I go to the workspace, then the behavior and the global wind, and for example, just increase it, the tree should be basically just moving with the speed of the wind, but I think it's a little bit broken. Okay, never mind. I just fixed it by literally just removing wind shake and then basically just pasting it back in. Anyways, we have a working tree now. Let me see what's going to happen if I decrease the global wind speed then it's going to be a little bit better but yeah for some reason this tree is having a really really nice shading effect but yeah we basically just have a base for a game right now and you guys can recommend what can be changed or added and trust me i basically just read every comment so i'm probably going to pick out best ideas and also apparently every horror game has a monster at some point so yeah you can leave suggestions on that too but anyways that's basically going to be everything for today so if you enjoyed the video then leave a like to support the channel also check out my patreon page and yeah thank you for watching hope you had a nice day and see ya